say again to you, good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here uh, on this October day, the first Sunday of October. It's good to see everyone this morning. I like the change in the weather, but you know one thing about our God, he does not change. <laughs> he changed the seasons, he changed the other things, those tides and everything, but he never changes. No, it's, it's good to be here this morning because we have our continuing lesson. Our overall theme is worshiping in a covenant community. Yeah. In this unit, we're looking yeah. at songs of the Old Testament, songs of the Old Testament. And the first one is going to come to us from Psalms, the 50, 51st number of Psalms. That's where our, right. our scripture will come this morning. It will put you in the hand of the music ministry, and we'll get started with our lesson. Morning. morning. How we thank God for loving us enough to give us another chance to do the best that we can. We invite you all to join us on this very familiar song, Give Me a Clean Heart. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you once again, Lord, thanking you for this beautiful and wonderful day, God, that was not promised to us. God, we thank you for your many and mighty blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Father, we thank you for the loving kindness, the tender mercy. We thank you for your, your peace, your joy. Even, Lord, even our struggles, we thank you for those because we know that you are there. And God, we thank you for just the 
just the access of a heavenly host watching over us. God, we thank you for friends. We thank you for friendship. We thank you for family, church family. We thank you, Lord, for all those things that you encamped around us to make us who we are and show you to show us how much you love us. And so, God, we be careful to give you all honor and praise for all that you've done. Now, God, there is others in different countries still bound in chains and hell against their will. Wars are still happening. God, we ask for your peace. We ask for your presence. And here domestically, we pray for those families who have been hit with the bereavement of their loss of their loved one, the loss of homes, the loss of dwellings, the loss of stuff that they needed. But God, we thank you for allowing your people to reach out to them, touch them with dollars and phone calls and just donations. We thank you, Lord, for your people showing up for those who are in need because that's what we're supposed to do. So we thank you, Lord, for putting it on our hearts to do those things and executing what you put in our hands to do. Now, God, we ask that you give us a word from on high. Touch us. Let this lesson speak to us in a way that it resonates, that we'll be able to go by and understand what you have for us to do. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. living in a covenant community. In this particular lesson, how looking at how the songs of the Old Testament rings to us today, the title of the lesson was Prayers of Repentance and Confession. Here we're, we'll move into the scripture so we can go ahead and get done with the scripture, then we can move deeper, take a deeper dive into the text. In Psalm 51 reads in parts, verses one, four, 10, 12, and 15, 17, and I'll read it in that order. Have mercy on me, O God, according to the loving kindness, uh, the loving kindness according unto the multitude of the tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my, my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. For I, for I acknowledge my, 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 acknowledge my transgressions my sins is forever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou, may, that, thou, that thou might be justified when, when, when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and a renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from the, thy presence, and, not, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. I'll pause there for a minute. Um, this lesson is a song from, the, from David, and it's one of the more expressive, intimate psalms that David wrote in regards to things that he had gone through. And it, you would, one would say it was a true expression of a, of, a, uh, of a sinner's care and his desire to be reconnected to his God, to be cleansed and, and also be, be restored from his transgressions. And we'll find in this particular psalm that the backstory why it was written, David, out on his ledge of his roof, he was out there and he saw this woman and he desired to have this woman. And from that, he took the woman and from that, the woman became with child. And from that, he called the husband who was out in the battlefield, called him home with the hopes that his, his sins would be covered up by them uh, having intimate relations with one another. But the but the husband 
was very diligent in his duty as a soldier that he couldn't rest at home while his men was on the field giving up their lives. So David, when he found this out, sent him out into the battlefield. You can say at, at, on the front line and the man was killed and David took the woman for his wife and the wife and, and, and David tried to cover his sin. It's a lesson for us to, to understand and understand who David is. Remember, David was the one that, that God himself said he turned not aside from his commandment of the Lord in all the days of his life. But this one thing haunted him. This one thing. And he said David was a, a, of God's own eye. But, but, but David had this one thing. And it snowballed on David. Yeah. And I say to you, when you, when you create sin, on, you go into sin, yeah. nothing is produced but more sin. <laughs> on, That's the only thing that you can get. You know, fruit don't fall forth from the tree. And sin, it, it multiplies. Yeah. And, and David got caught in this thing. Yeah. And we have to be careful when we, when we, when we, we tell the little white lie. Then you need a little white out. <laughs> and then a white out don't <laughs> white it all out. <laughs> because it's still there. Because when you look on the other side of white out, you can still see it. <laughs> and so, David, we got to be careful when we, when we start sin and, and, and we, we run towards it. And then think we're wise enough, wiser than God, to cover it up. Here we can we here we find David and, and, and David did this thing and he tried to cover it up. And David got to a point where David David basked in what he done. And when I say he basked, he 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 got to a point nine months he thought nobody knew. And and God does that for us sometimes. He let us waddle in our mess for a while. And he, David waddled in it for a while. He got deep inside of it that David, that, that, that David got amnesia. David forgot what he had done. He didn't think he had did anything wrong. And then it's a good thing to have a friend. It's good to have friends, especially one that holds you accountable. And his friend Nathan came and told him a story. God sent him. But he told Nathan, Nathan told him this story about this, 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 this guy who had one lamb. And then and there's this, this king who had multiple flocks. Yeah. And the king decided to take the one lamb yeah. and then not take anything from his flock. And it, it roared David so much that he said, who is him? Kill him. Take, take his head. And Nathan had to remind him, David, it's you. <laughs> and David said, it, 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 is it I? <laughs> It is, it, it is me. And David was so overwhelmed with guilt and shame. And sometimes we're walking around still today. We done some dirt. We done something and we walking around like we ain't done nothing. Like, well, I did that thing. I mean, oh, well. <laughs> yeah, we, we get so bold and cavalier that we said, oh, well. What's done is done. But God is saying, the bill comes due. <laughs> the bill always come due. You may not want it, but it's coming. And so whatever deed we done, we have to deal with at some point in time in our life. And David had to deal with his. But, but Nathan left him with a message when, when, because David knew the penalty of his heinous act. It meant death. He, as the king, should have been killed. But along with the message that Nathan gave him, he also said, God has forgiven you. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately. But David, David, even knowing that God had forgiven him, David hadn't quite forgave himself. David became, he became connected with who he was. David became connected with this monster in David because David was aware now what he actually done. It's amazing how you put things in the rearview mirror for a while and we seem to forget. Yeah. 
But it was brought forth to the front stage for David, and David got to a point that he had to pin this thing. That's how we got our 51st number of Psalm. And David said, it's one thing when, when, we, when we mess up, it's okay to, and it's right to apologize for, to the person that you, you, you wronged. But David understood that what I, who I wronged was God. And I need you to understand, you may do something against me or I may do something against you, but it's not you or I who we're doing against. It's against God that we're doing it. And sometimes we see that person because I didn't like them in the beginning. <laughs> but you have to understand something, that God loved them too. That he gave his only begotten son for them too. Who are you to say who God loves that you hate? How can you hate somebody that God said he loved? Yeah. You might hate their ways, of course, yeah. but you can't utterly hate them. Yeah. Because David was at a place that he should be hated. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He should be hated. And David knew the penalty for what he did. Yeah. But David, he, he got on his pen, but first on his knees. He yeah. said, have mercy on me, O God, yeah. Yeah. according to the loving kindness, according to according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Now David came, now I want you to see how David unrobed here. Yeah. David did not come confessing as a, as a king. No. He didn't come confessing as someone who, who, who slayed Goliath. He didn't come one who was popular among the people. He didn't come one who was the king uh, or the prince that would become king. Yeah. He, he, he unrobed all that and just came as David. Yeah. God's yeah. servant, yeah. David. Yeah. It's, am it's amazing when we, what we, what we really see who we are when we yeah. take off some of these titles we got. Yeah. I'm, I'm Dr. So-and-so, yeah. or I, I, I'm, I'm the manager of. When you decide to take off who you really, those labels that yeah. you have pumped yourself up with yeah. and get face to face with God, God will show you who you really are. Yeah. Yeah. He will. Yeah. And this is what David, he was, I say people change for two reasons. Either they mature and change or their situation and circumstances make them change. So David got to a situation where he had both. He understood his situation and his, his circumstances made him change. And wisely, yeah. he didn't go to God as, well, God, I'm, I'm David. I'm your king. Right. Right. Forgive me. He didn't come all pompous and proud. Yeah. He came lowly yeah. as, as we should come when we mess up. Right. Not to the one that we, that we messed up with, but to the God we serve. Yeah. That the God see who, that sees everything, because we we say, "Forgive me to the person." We forget about God. <laughs> you know, this thing I've done against God Himself. And so He says, "According to all your loving kindness, all your loving kindness, God's loving kindness, that He gave His only begotten Son for a world that would not accept Him." For when his son walked on the earth, they, they, they sped on him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. You got to love folks a lot <laughs> to give your only begotten son. And this is what he did according to that loving kindness. Let me speak about it more modernly for you. That thing that you did and God got you out of, that was his loving kindness. <laughs> that job you have that you really should not have, that was his loving kindness. Yeah, and that the job that you have had all these years yeah. is only God's loving yeah. kindness. Yeah. And that, 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 that spouse that God bless you with, yeah. I know you don't want him or her sometimes, but that's God's loving kindness. Because he looked beyond yeah. your faults and gave you what you needed. Yeah. So when we run out of money, God seems to have somebody to come with some money yeah. for it. Yeah. That's a part of his loving kindness. Yeah. Then he says, upon the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. <laughs> David said, I, I, I did this thing. But God, I, I, I need you 
to cover me. Because when these folks find out what I really did, I have no kingdom anymore. You have no authority anymore if God uncovered you. If he did not blot out your transgression, you know we got some secret sins. If God did not, if we didn't ask God for his forgiveness, that he blot out those things and he put them in the sea of forgiveness, where would we be? Because you and I both know there are some things that we've done. Thank God that nobody knows. But here's what David realized that. He said, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me, cleanse me from my sin. So David said, wash me thoroughly because David knew how I'm, I'm in this thing deep. I'm real dirty. One wash ain't going to get it. And for some of us, one wash ain't going to get it. Washing wrenches, it's not going to get it. We need to be tumbled and we need to be tossed. I mean, we need to be strung out. Because we got some stuff. We're human. We got some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But David was real with his. And David said, thoroughly wash me from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Now, when he asked for the washing, he said, this thing that I've done, don't let me do that again. Because David went after that. David went after her. There's something that you're sinfully doing, you going after so this is what he said. This, this, this thing is in me. Yeah. David said, it in, I read somewhere, David said, I was born into this iniquity. When I, when I hit the ground, I had this thing in me. Yeah. 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 And he's asking God, this thing that was born with me, take it from me. There's some things that you have in you, you was born with. Yeah, yeah you would say, hey, my mama gave me this, or daddy brought it down to me. I'm just like my dad. But no, you were born with this thing. But unless you ask God to remove it from you, take it away, it won't be moved. Yeah. Uh, trust me, you can wrestle with it. Yeah. You can toss it with it. Yeah. You can put it to the side for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Sister Peterson, it's like, it's, it's, like, it's like melons in the summer. Eventually, if you plant them, they're coming up. <laughs> it, they're going to come up. Yeah. You cannot hide from it unless God takes it away from you. Right. And, and what David was smart enough to do, he asked God to take it away from him. Yeah. That's all we have to do. Yeah. Ask him, yeah. God, yeah. take this from me, yeah. this taste of, 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 of whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Take it away from me. Yeah. This lustful taste that I have, this alcoholic taste that I have, yeah. this taste for gossip that I have, take it away from me. Then he says, for I acknowledge my transgression, yeah. which is the start. You can't get to a personal conviction until you acknowledge your transgression. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You can't be personally convicted by it. If you, David was not personally convicted about it because he didn't acknowledge it. I, I, I didn't do nothing bad. <laughs> Until you acknowledge what it is that plagues you, you cannot have a personal conviction about it. So he acknowledged, he said, I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. <sighs> Some things that you've done should keep you on a straight and narrow. I don't ever want to do that again. Yeah, it got to be before you, because if you put it in a rearview mirror too much, you might think you Superman. I got over it one time, I can get over it again. No, but you got that, that thing you have, it's kind of like that thorn in, 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 in the apostle's side. It reminds you of where you come from. It reminds you of what you've done, that it keeps it before you, so I don't go down that path again. Your sin's got to be before you. You don't just, God will blot it out, but you don't forget it. it don't, you don't want it to, 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 to captivate you. You don't want it to, to apprehend you that you, you don't receive God's grace. But you want to keep it in mind because I know what's in me and I can do that. You want to be mindful of what you can do. So you can never do it again. 
And so he says, my sins have ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest, that mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. He said, this thing that I've done, it's, it's against you, God, and you only. Yeah. He didn't say, God, you gave me these eyes. God, you gave me these desires. God, he, he said, no, God, it, it is me. Amen. And I've done this thing against you. And he made it very clear. I have sinned against God yeah. that he's done this evil in thy sight. In thy sight. Yeah. He's letting, he, he's acknowledging to God. This thing didn't pass you. It didn't pass you, God. Because some things that we do, we think God is not watching. <laughs> you think he doesn't see what we've done. Yeah, I know in the darkest of places, you're like, oh, no, God is not here. And yeah, he's there. He's there. We cannot, we cannot overlook the ominous of God. The ominous of God, he's everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's, 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 he's everywhere. He's, 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 he's all-knowing. And so understanding the ominous of God that whatever we do, it is being seen by him. Amen. And then he says that, that thou mightest be justified when thou speak. He says, whatever come before me, God, whatever you have for me, I know it's right for judgment. He, 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 and, and the thing about it is, oftentimes when we sin and, and get ourselves in a place that, you know, that, that we need some help from God, we don't want to accept the consequences that come with that. Yeah. David here was willing to accept the consequences. Whatever that judgment was, yeah. he was like, God, I'm with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, is, yeah. that takes character. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It takes God's character. <laughs> Because men, we'll try to we'll try to find our way out. Yeah. Lord, you feel, Lord, you see any way fit to get me out of this, <laughs> and and not not hit me with what you need to hit me with. We try to we try to bargain with God and understanding that we have nothing to bargain with God with. Yeah. That's right. He didn't bother trying to bar bargain. We, we we have nothing. God has everything. We have nothing to bargain with God with, and so when God. The scripture tells us he chastises those whom he loves. Amen. When God gives us our, our whoopings, <laughs> yeah, and I got, I've, had, I've had a few. It's edifying for the soul. Amen. Because we'll find here that David is better yeah. by his confession and his willingness to take what God had for him. Yeah. Amen. And evidently, God knew his character because yeah. soon after Nathan gave him the message of what he, telling him what he did, uh, God had already forgiven him. Because yeah. God knows something about you. Yeah. He knows all about you. He knows how you're going to respond yeah. to certain situations. Yeah. And the question is, can you walk it out? Can you walk it out? Yeah. And David understood that this, this, this fleshly man, this, this man of the flesh needs some things that only God can give him. In verse 10, he says, create in me a clean heart. Wow. Because where the sin came from with David, it came from a, a dark place. Yeah. Yeah. He said, create in me a clean heart, yeah. O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Yeah. Yeah. That should be all our. You're right. That should be all our praise. That should be all our want. Because life has a way of, of attaining the heart. Mm. That, that life has a way of with sin uh, 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 suffocating the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to understand that sins, sin wars against the soul. It, it, every time you sin, it, it takes a chunk out. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a hit. Yeah. It, it does. It, 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 your soul takes a hit. Yeah. Yeah. 
but only God can repair it. Yeah. And David knew, say, created me a clean heart and the right spirit. So I don't go down this road again. That my, and my countenance don't drift away again. That I don't find myself on the phone texting and gossiping anymore. He says, cast me. And then he says, you have to understand the history behind it. The reason, verse 11, David asked for. David, during this time when, when, when God's people didn't follow his will or his commandment, God cut them off. Oh, yeah, he, he cut him off. And he says here that cast me not away from thy presence. We stand in a place of grace that God won't utterly cut us off unless we do things to that ourselves to cut ourselves away from God. Yeah. Here, God says, he, he says, don't, 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 don't cast me away. Then he also, from thy presence, then he says, take not the Holy Spirit from me. Can you imagine not being able to connect with the Holy Spirit? And that should be our prayer every day. Clean heart, right spirit. Lord, Lord don't take this away from me. <laughs> because his spirit is life. His Holy Spirit is life that we, is our lifeblood. Yes, it's, 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 it's our hope for tomorrow. Yes. In verse 12, he says, restore unto me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. David had got to a point that, and we can get to that point that we mess up so bad, <clears throat> so badly that we think that God don't love us. That nobody in the world, that nobody in the world want to see us coming. And family's going to treat you that way. Yeah. Some families will treat you that way. You mess up so bad, I hear come that boy again. I, we don't want to see him anymore. Yeah. But you have to know, even if you find yourself in that place, God still loves you. God is not going to utterly cut, <laughs> cut you off. You, you, you repent for the thing that you did. You acknowledge and you repent for the thing that you did and ask God to, to create in you a clean heart and a right spirit. Nobody else may like you, but God still loves you. And here what, what David had done, he had gotten to the point where, you remember early where, where David was so happy that David danced. But this thing that David done, he, he was so ashamed of that he wanted the joy of his salvation back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever you've done, if you pray to God and you repented, you acknowledge what you've done, you confess to God that obtain your joy. Yes, get your joy. Yes, God has already granted it to you. Yes, get sir. your joy. Yes, Oftentimes the world will beat you down, but God says, I have joy for you. And this joy that you have, you have to understand, the world didn't give it, and the world definitely can't take it away. And you have to believe that, because David could have, we could have, this could have played out differently for David. He could have went as he was with his son being sick. He could have went in sackcloth and ashes, and he could have never came out of there, because he could have been so overwhelmed with what he'd done as the high man in the kingdom. But God restored him. Because you have to understand, there is a higher condemnation for those that God chooses to be over his people. There is a greater condemnation. And it, 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 it's weight. It's heavy. It's, it's weight. And so when we mess up, we, man, it, it, it's, it's a thousand time boulder is on top of us. And David must have felt this weight. But that's when he asked for the joy of his salvation. You will feel that weight, but only God can grant you the joy of your salvation. And then he mentioned, uphold me with thy free spirit. The free spirit that God gives willingly. It is ours to take. I'm going to pause here for a few minutes so Sister Sharonda can do her thing and then we'll get right back.
Okay.